What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Bavaria. So to pick up where we left off, uh, this force did originally advance east towards Venice, but actually that was a really bad idea. So we have retreated, unfortunately we've retreated into this valley here, um, but we have been pursued by an Ottoman stack, and it's an Ottoman stack that compromises mostly of missile cavalry. So probably going to want to deal with them now because missile cavalry is uh, one of the most frustrating units to face in Empire Total War because really they can, especially the archer, the, ar the archer cavalry, really more so than the missile cavalry because bows are, they do a lot of damage and they fly quite fast. Uh, so yeah, it's not necessarily the best unit to uh, engage with a primarily infantry based force. Let's put my guns up on the hill just to engage. Everyone else just fundamentally form a form a line because there's only one unit of Israeli in the fight. So what we're going to witness is just there's not going to be much use for fire by rank. There's not going to be much use for a lot of things really. So I mean, I've got my cavalry. But it's not exactly going to be the most... Well, it will be useful, but the fact that I don't have fire by rank will be a significant detriment to my overall military capability. So I'm going to speed up time minutes, minute, allow my guys to get into position. Ooh, pause, 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 pause. Here, charging. Charging, I can handle. Form square with my grenadiers. Run the flank up. Where's my cavalry? Get them over here rapidly. A couple of units are getting hit that can't really do much of. About it. Make sure I counter charge with my own dragoons. Because these that's unit of militia, so they can't really do anything except just kind of hunker down. And there goes one enemy cavalry unit. Those infantry units deploy square, get my hussars in. Unsurprisingly, my got a unit of militia that's routing. Bit of a bummer, but I do have a unit of dragoons that can go in against them. Now oh, these are my uh, first unit, my first foot guard unit. My militia routing. Well, they're mili well, not my militia, but it is my militia. Get my guys out of square. Get them to form up behind the new enemy strong point. Both my cavalry is engaging the Delhi horsemen. My grenadiers took a real pounding, but they're holding back that unit of horsemen. Same with that unit of horsemen there as well. Get my dragoons to charge them in the rear. Okay, pursue, pursue, pursue. You guys have done enough. The enemy is running. The enemy is routing. A couple of units have returned. So we're going to want one cavalry to chase down the Israeli. You men cease fire. Just chase down the Israeli, because to be honest, these guys aren't going to be able to make too much progress. Yeah, there's one of the units that's come back, so let's charge a cavalry unit straight into them. Make the other cavalry unit continue to charge down the 8th. Oh, the unit of horsemen's engaging with uh, bow fire. So it's, which they will get me to break square to try and defeat, but it looks like they are going to hunker down. Engage us with. Well, I'm going to fight 
fight a ranged battle. Let's get a cavalry now over here to try to help out. Get another cavalry to chase down their Sereli. Okay, let's get let's send both my cavalry units to deal with their Sereli. Continue to chase them down. But yeah, it's a bit of a dodgy battle that, because you didn't couldn't didn't really uh, allow us to bring our true amount of firepower to bear. Yeah, they lost 555 men, that's not bad. They lost nearly a thousand. We just need to keep blunting these Ottoman probing attacks whenever they do advance. So ideally I want to slowly build up my... this army. And start reinforcing them with more artillery, more infantry. So I can begin to more aggressively push back against the Ottoman Empire. But as it stands, I am limited on funds because Denmark won't get off my back. Because they're blockading me and no one's doing no one's attacking the Danish ships, and I can't do it because I haven't got the money. So the French are growing in strength. These troops here at Hanover probably need to be focused on. At least as far as the line infantry and maybe that unit of militia goes. So I do want to try and knock out George Bellamy, even though they don't appear to be doing anything. You men pull back to this side of the border. Let's pick two units of line infantry to replenish. You're still replenishing here at Brussels. We can't really help you out with anything either. I don't really want to move these guys away. I mean, I do want to attack Brussels, but I need to... Really, I need these guys to be replenished. And I might actually want to spend a bit more cash making sure that... This army is in as good a nick as it can possibly be, although it looks like it's not... That's not going to happen anytime soon. Not without significant cash. So I want... Could maybe drag a militia unit across, but I want these guys to strengthen up. I'm going to attack George Bellamy, defeat this incursion. Then go south to park at Cologne, because the French are gathering an army. And the force here at Stuttgart just to try and dissuade them from going east. Three more turns to explosive shells, two more turns till we get flying shuttle. In terms of diplomacy... I mean, Denmark hates us and they're not going to make peace because we're the only country they're at war with. So they only have one target. And that's just a huge amount of income that we're not getting. That's really bad. I'm not going to give away Brandenburg to get it because I don't... That means I'm giving away my main port and all I'm doing is transferring my trade problem over to here. So what I might do... Well, they'll get better once Hanover's... Once I've removed Mr. Bellamy. Because that would give me access to another port. Because Prussia... Well, Brandenburg does not develop a second port. I'm not about to start dumping money into my navy, even though even though their force is incredibly weak. I'm only getting 1,600 a turn, which I don't think is even enough to build. It's enough to recruit one to fifth rate per turn. But with all these threats on my front, I can't really afford to not focus on them. I mean, Paris is ripe for the taking, but I am tempted to try and see if I can just get a Peace, trade, and I don't, I don't want to give you fire by rank. I'll give you utilitarianism. Ah, <sighs> dear, 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 dear. See, they're friendly to me. They're net positive. But still, they just think, ah, no, we do want to fight with them. It's like, all right, then. We're going to take Paris off of you, then. That's what's going to happen. And Britain continues to reinforce her blockade of my port, which is just ludicrous. Utterly, utterly, utterly ludicrous. Yeah, France is recruiting troops probably to try and push something like Cologne. So if my army in Brussels is up to strength, I am going to push and lay siege to their capital. Actually, just a second, I'm going to close my window.
Right. The Ottoman descending. Looks like that. Oh, go on. I thought Russia would be at war with Denmark. Dang that. But there's no way I can make someone go to war with Denmark either. It looks like they're probably not going to leave the Baltic unless someone else does declare war on them. I was hoping Russia would be able to do that. But it appears they are not going to do that. But anyway, at the very least, if I take Paris, that gives me an access to a whole load of ports. So I should then start to uh, get some extra trade in. So, yeah, you're blockading me. My Brussels force. Let's repair their barracks. We can leave Brussels. Put Paris under siege. Let's squeeze them. We're not going to attack them because they're fortifications. We're going to squeeze them because we can definitely defeat this force in the field. We're going to force them to... We're going to force them to, <laughs> to come to the decision about what they're going to do. I've spent a bunch of money replenishing... This force a little bit more. We've got a bit of time because Britain seems to not want to move. We do still have militia in our capital. We can spend a bit more cash trying to replenish some of our troops here. I mean, ordinarily I would just replenish all but do not have the income. Let's move my monitor to the corner of my screen's getting cut off. There we go. All these guys are going to be spies. One more turn to flying shuttle, which would be great. You guys are continuing to replenish. You guys aren't far off. I may even steal... Well, no, I want that militia there, really. 1400 next turn. Not great, but yeah, what can we do? So that might be the incentive they need to move. If they move for Cologne, that's not going to be ideal because we're going to be negative for a turn. But I should then be able to take it back and combine. Well, this line, this um, these infantry mercenaries will get involved as well. So let's hit end turn. Ultimately, the potential gain from taking Paris outweighs the potential risk. Yes, I do want to fight your garrison, Paris. Let's do it, and the first thing we're going to spend our money on next turn is reinforcing my army that's sieging them. Hell, hell, if we do enough damage to them, we could then assault them next turn. But yeah, deploy back away from the city. Allow our artillery to do their work obviously because of because of the rain we're going to get sound challenges so I think that was a bad idea so let's line up our two units gun team two units Gun team. So yeah, deploy back because they've got mortars and we want their mortars to come out onto the field. Because if we can destroy them, that would make a follow-up siege much simpler. Uh, although I do think my immediate reaction is to not assault, maintain the siege. It will take a few more turns, but at the very least it will cause the flank to be stable. So we formed a line. Then my guns engage their targets as at will. The main thing is going to be I want to see these garrison, mortar garrison troops withdraw. I'm not entirely sure who they're even shooting at. Oh, they aren't shooting because... Probably trying to shoot at people inside the wall. Just shoot at the wall. If no one's going to do anything, just shoot at the wall. Try to blow a hole on it. They attacked us. Part of the reason why I spread my artillery out so wide, it is because they have so many troops. 
wherever or where they hit our line, we're going to really need to use our canister shot and our cavalry to equalize the enemy's mass. But in the meantime, blowing a hole in the wall will definitely do. I do love how their officer just does not care where he's looking. He's just there going, hmm. The enemy's front rank is advancing. Still, make a make a, um, a hole in the wall because they might not actually be attacking us yet. They might. This might just be another redeployment cycle. Which, if it is. I mean, if this is their first wave, then they've made a bad decision. Because my artillery will sweep them off of the ground very, very well. Okay, now they're bringing out the rest of their force, so I might want to pivot. See, this is where you can't ever rely on group formations. You need to ungroup them, drag them, and then group them. You guys will probably be good. Yeah, these guys on the flank are a bit trickier. They're going to rely more on... Well, I was about to say they're going to rely more on canister shot, but if they're deciding to ever so nicely creep towards us in the, you know, down the muzzle of my front ranks, then they are more than welcome to. Switch to canister shot. Yeah, the right flank is aware that they need to run. Commit my cavalry forward. Already some of it. You men keep reloading. These other guns, switch to canister shot, engage the militia to your front. You men begin to get some initial shots against the enemy in the flank. Charge my Prushank horse into the 7th, because you might be able to get a cheeky waver off the bat. Retarget you guys into the 30th. So let's try to see if we can cut down enough of the 7th. They're shattered. Withdraw. Focus on the armed citizenry coming right at us. Switch to round shot. You go after that militia unit that's right there. You men counter charge the firelock armed citizenry because they're running for my guns. Get that Prashenk horse back, get this cavalry back. The gunners are still manning their guns. It's got line infantry versus colonial militia, which have broken. Charge on and attack. The guns cease fire. Actually, I want my cavalry over on the right as an equalizer. You men engage, we're getting sound shenanigans. Garrison Provincial Militia is going to go down. My guns have not abandoned the fight. You men engage the militia. Get my pushing horse against the colonial regiment of foot. Get my artillery to engage the enemy there. You men bayonet charge the enemy there. You men charge over onto the flank. You men blast the armed citizenry in the centre. No, actually, there you go. You've knocked out the garrison militia. See if you can shatter them. Come on. If not, get back to the centre quickly. My Prushenk horse back on the right flank. My guns are doing an okay job maintaining a level of stability. Let's pivot my line to provide a bit more firepower. 
You men charge in the back of this French charge on my flank. There we go. Get my cavalry up here as well. There we go. So the infantry. Charge the firelock arm citizenry. You men charge them. You men charge into the French. My gunners. You guys shoot at the regiment of militia. Let's maybe pull these guys back. You men counter charge the infantry because I left you too exposed. Okay, a cavalry charge the armed citizenry. My gunners. Okay, them howitzers still in there. Yeah, they're still in there. Okay, so I want to be careful how far I push up. My infantry on the left has taken a hammering. But it is a victory. Pull my cavalry back. Keep my gunners firing at will. My Prussian course getting picked apart by the 46th. You men are engaging the armed citizenry. Okay. Citizenry, militia. Focus on the garrison line. It's a toss of a coin who breaks first, 46th or the 3rd Regiment. It looks like it might be the 46th because we've gone back to Shaken, they're still a wavering. Get them to keep attacking. Get you men to charge the militia because they've decided to come back. Form our line again. These men's job is to charge and kill the 46th. Okay, you guys can now pivot to face down the right flank. Can you men, are you men engaging? I think you are. Yeah, they're engaging, they're just reloading. You men. I'm not engaging, you men, you've only got one gun team that's actually working, which is so frustrating. The artillery in this game at times. Bring my cavalry up because the enemy's bayonet charging the other flank now. Counter bayonet charge. They form square to nullify my cavalry, so let's pull out of that formation. You men back into line. You men chased down the garrison, the provincial line. No, no. Okay, back into line. To be honest, I shouldn't go mad pursuing things. Okay, let's go get send a unit of cavalry into the center. You men engage the armed citizenry. This gun team engaged the 15th. Because then... We should start to see... The right flank get damaged and sent back. Damn, the sun is like right in my eyes. I suspect we will be going for another um, replenish and defend position. Pr hopefully, I'd like well, I'd like to get some reinforcements from the militia holding Amsterdam. Withdraw the front, keep the artillery firing. 
Cavalry is getting mortared, but they're still going to make it. And then now the mortars are gone, I can push my flank up to land some more devastating musket fire onto the enemy. There we go. Field Artillery Regiment in the centre is going down. Those units are routing, which is good. Continue to chase them down, because that's the general... Uh, they're not there. Well, they're truly their general, but it's their, uh, their equivalent. Seventeenth are going down. Okay, there we go. Ceasefire the foot artillery. Ceasefire the musketry. We are going to continue because it's in our interests to whittle down the enemy as much as we possibly can. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the line infantry is going to rout. They're going to be close to the edge of the battlefield anyway. At the very least, thinning out their militia will go a long way to speeding up the end of this action. Taking over Paris itself won't be easy. Well, gaining control of the city won't be easy, but we can demolish their university to do it. So that's something at least. And I don't like the fact I'm having to demolish all these universities, but I don't really have a choice because I can't afford to sit on the territory and have the French rebel and all sorts of other unpleasantness. But yeah, this is going to be expensive to replenish. I know in theory I've demolished a hole in the wall, but that's not likely going to be a, a thing in the next turn, because the AI can be quite unpredictable as to uh, how damage is done. We headed down to 2,200 men, we've killed 3,000 of them for the loss of 700. Ooh. Okay, they've gone for Stuttgart. That was a bit of a surprise, but not devastating, because we can swing our force to the east, west and attack the city, if it even falls. I mean, we've got mortars, but they're going to be rubbish. But I'm thinking we've got two garrison line units, and we've also got two um, Western European mercenary units, and they can do fire by rank. And form square as well. So it's not actually necessarily the end of the world. Could try and defend the town, but again, I like the height advantage back here. Okay, so let's put a... You... Philocom citizenry, you... Then put a militia and a infantry unit on one flank. A militia and infantry unit on the other flank. Realistically, it's all we can do. <laughs> um, I want to try and do damage to particular units. So mortars can be tricky, because when you try and make them attack the targets you want, they can just uh, sometimes up and leave. Although it is tempting to actually just form the most potent centre I can. Mortars are opened up. Form the most potent centre I can. Put a militia on the flanks that probably aren't going to last very long. My armed citizenry on the other flank. My howitzers are opening up. I wonder who they're going to be shooting at. Swiss pikemen. Oh, the if you let them shoot what they want, they do like to go for the Swiss pikes. Let's go for the Royal Sudois, which are a they're a decent infantry unit. Well, actually, the pikes are a bit more of a concern, because if they get to my line, they will just clear me out. <laughs> okay, there go the light hussars, so I might want to actually put a mercenary unit out. Mercenary unit out on the flank, militia in the centre. 
The enemy are folding in their flank. The house is tempting. Well, I doubt we're going to be super duper victorious. But at the very least, I can try and do as much damage as I can. So the enemy cavalry is charging. As expected, they have gone straight for the militia. So I want to run my militia into my squares. Because ideally I will get the this resolved as quickly as possible. This square might break. But if they can hold, they'll defeat the 16th light horse, which would be significant. You did not hold, so form square again. You men, engage. Engage at the front. Form square again. My mortars have already upset. My oh, friendly fire mortars have already made the 26th route. God, mortars suck. They really do suck. That's an almost full strength garrison line unit routed from friendly fire. Not even necessarily friendly fire, just misses. Well, let's just throw them in. When that line infantry unit routed, and now the 28th have routed, that's that's it. Game over. Bayonet charge. Do as much damage as you can. See, they did come back, but it's too late now. Battle has been joined. If we're lucky, we might get a unit to break here, because we do have them surrounded. I doubt we'll be so lucky here. Two... Ooh, uh, that regiment of foot's... Well, the pikemen were wavering for a second there. But there we go. Yeah, friendly fire from those mortars was enough just to make one of my infantry units row and then my formation just dis just fell apart. Just fight for as long as you can, do as much damage as you can. God, I hate mortars. I hate mortars so much. Ah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I'm getting, I've got to a point where I do just start to deploy them ahead of the line and just let them die. There we go. God, what a waste. What a waste. Stupid mortars. And I couldn't redeploy really them up front because they're my general's unit. I should have just had them sit back and stay silent. But that's not good at all. Uh, we are going to immediately counter-attack from the east and also bring in troops from the north. That's the attack. That's the attack that's been on the horizon for a while now. We do have Poland continuing to cause issues, and the Ottomans naturally. That's not. That's really not good. But we do have to strike west. We can't afford to let the the French break out. We might have to dispatch some of the Prague armies away to try and intercept and destroy that Ottoman force. Venice is going to start raiding Austrian Ottoman territory, which is good. So we're going to be potentially... Okay. Really positive. Why is that? Okay. So, let's assume... Well, actually, Stuttgart might re might actually rebel, which we can then 
let the French deal with the rebellion for now. Let's move you in the way of the Ottomans here. Let's move these militiamen to Cologne, maybe? Well, first of all, should have done what I, should have done what I said I was going to do a while, or previously. Start to try and replenish my key forces here. So I'm not going to move... I'm not going to move this army here at Prague, because that's an incredibly powerful army. But what I am going to do, I believe, is take this force and attack George Bellamy. Because then we might be able to free up this army, plus the militia currently garrisoning Amsterdam, to move south and threaten uh not necessarily Württemberg but the that area I'm counting on Württemberg rebellions tying down that French army and allowing them to not really move so let's put my guns up on this high ground let's deploy a reasonable infantry line These two units out of commission, just don't even think they exist. So they do have their own guns, but they've... It says they're firing, but I think we're probably out of their arc. Unlike my guys. Although, I am going to still want to push up with my line. Probably something like here. Let my artillery continue to shoot at their regiment of horse, and let's speed up time. So my guys are just walking. We want to try and surround the enemy line and try and deploy our cavalry as conservatively as possible. So that when the time comes, we can chase down as many units as possible. Looks like they can't really make up their mind about what they want to focus on, which is good for us because it allows our troops to get up into the fire, into their battle positions as quickly as possible. So we do have more firepower than the British do. Thanks to our enlightened researchers. But during the final stint, we are going to want them to run into position. Preferably try and establish a advantage on one flank or another. There we go, forcing them into the battle. My militia are going to be the first to open up. Where's my limited unit of cavalry? And my militia. They can pick at the regiment of horse who are already wavering. If they rout, they will come back. Because they've not lost very many at all. Very many men at all. Push my Prushank horse up the right. Okay, so let's begin to take advantage of our militia units to extend around one flank. So these two units here form up and fire into their flank. That's not entirely reasonable. They're going to come back. They've not lost very many men at all. But still. my forces up to take advantage of the situation. Get my grenadiers up on the flank, ready to open up into the block of British troops who are being engaged from the Bavarians in the trees. Firing by rank. You're not going to be able to match our firepower, Britain. I'm 
you're also giving away cheap infantry kills. But that is your general's unit, actually, so that's why you don't want to commit. Nah, maintain positions, actually. That's not a bad overall spot. Charge my... Ooh, is that there? Ooh, two cavalry units is great. Focus our artillery on the 9th Regiment of Militia. So I can more astutely push my line up to provide a bit of cover. The 3rd Regiment of Horse is the unit that's got their general in it, though, actually, and they are very weak. Where's my Wild Dragoons? Because you've got a militia unit there you can pursue. Obviously they're not as nice to destroy as their infantry is, but as you can see, their infantry has collapsed. So form our lines. Oh, there they go. They have all gone. Get this unit of wild dragoons to chase down the militia, because that's probably what they're going to be best used for. My actual cavalry pursue the real infantry. So go after this Scottish line infantry, being aware of the stake. We're going to lose a couple of men to the stakes there. There we go. Pursue and destroy. I don't know how many British we're going to actually realistically kill, because we don't have a lot of cavalry. Stop you guys from firing, just in case you don't I don't want you guys to commit too much fratricide. But if you can knock out the 6th Regiment... Come on. 39, 36, 35, 33... Some of our Dragoon units still chasing down the militia. Understandable, because there's actually loads of militia and not many Dragoons. Although they are getting through them quite well. It looks like the 5th Regiment are actually going to go down fairly soon. Good. Now it's up to you guys to try and knock out the remaining militia. Although, I mean, this Dragoon unit's gaining a lot of experience because they've killed a lot of militiamen, but I don't... They might kill them. If they keep running in a weird directions, and we are picking off the troops that are in the most advantageous position to run away. Yeah, now our other cavalry is here. We might actually knock him out. Huh. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Okay, lost 74 men, they lost nearly a thousand. So then my militia garrison can push out, attack the remnants. Didn't take much damage. The Netherlands is currently in an okay position. You men combine your troops. Replenish what you can. March down towards Strasbourg. Whoop. Okay, let's see if we can try and get a, a peace with Britain as a result of that loss. Nope. Okay, we don't have the. M I was about to say we don't have the money to withstand this guy, but if he goes for the the mines, we might be able to intercept them. To be honest, a piece of the Ottomans, while not ideal, would be useful, but I don't think they're going to go for it. I mean, they're they're enemies with Russia now. Oh no, they're allies with Russia. Yeah, they're not going to go for it. Because we're their only major enemy. They're also at war with Venice. But, uh... They don't seem to want to go for Venice. I wonder why. Really, really want this weird Polish... Ru Actually, they... Oh, no, they're allied with Spain. They're not allied with the Ottomans. But they're both allied with Russia, so they don't want to declare war on each other. Hmm. Not great. But manageable. And at the very least, you guys can't leave Stuttgart because you will be getting rebe rebelled on at. So let's keep Mr. Mr. Kruger advancing south towards Strasbourg. 
keep Paris under siege because Paris is actually in really bad shape. Stettin has emerged, but we can't really do anything with that for now. We're going to get 1650 next turn, which isn't bad. Vismar got flying shuttles, so let's get them on towards Socket Bayonet and start chipping away at some of the more key military technologies. Although you're actually. Coburg's about to be ready, so let's maybe set you to work on Spinning Mule. So, Coburg, once you've finished explosive shells, you can then go on to the military tree. Let's hit end turn once more. Looks like the British are probably readying up another expedition. And there's another expedition already at sea. Yeah, there's no guarantees that we'll actually get much income out of our trade lanes, because with they're being quite heavily raided, but some is better than none. Spain isn't entirely happy with what's going on. And the trouble is, all of this kind of relies on Poland staying concerned. Squiffy. At some point they're going to reach their critical mass and they're going to go for us without mercy. Same with the Ottomans as well. We need to break the French will. That's not so bad. We can counter that move again and go to Munich and gain more troops for the garrison. I don't want Württemberg to rebel. Oh, the Mughals have knocked out the Marathas, so there goes a trade partner. And it looks they're probably going to keep going for me. So at some point they're going to recruit ships to prevent my ships from um, from uh, preventing their passage. So you men get back to Munich. If they want to come after us at Munich, they, they're more than welcome to. We'll get a good, nice, good garrison. This, you, you're being fully replenished. To be honest, I might actually take you guys, replenish all of you, send you to Stuttgart. Because next turn, they're going to break something. And I'm probably going to want to storm in and take the city as quickly as possible to prevent Württemberg from reforming. Let's replenish. Let's repair this craft workshop to try and get a bit of income. Let's distribute. No, no, I can't do that either. Let's distribute a bit more cash. To the armies that are currently sieging Paris. You've got 500 gold. Let's try to recruit another militia unit in Munich. It's not a lot we can really do. I might be able to try and make... Well, well, ideally, I'll take Stuttgart, Strasbourg, and take Paris, then make peace with the French. Because Paris will be worth... Because they're worth a crap load of money. To be honest, I could de I could just attack it, but my army is weak. It would be good to attack it, especially because I know their army is weak and they now no longer have mortars, so we could do quite a good job, but I'd probably like to wait until next turn for a bit more replenishment to go through. Apart from that, Spain, let's do... Offer technology canister for a grand. Very well. What about Sweden? See, Sweden really likes us. Offer explosive shells for grand. Good. Let's go over the pot. Oh, Italian states. Let's do that. Let's do carbines for a grand. What about Persia then? Can't trade tech with Persia because they've got everything. Venice tech. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Okay, what about if we sell you square formation for a grand? Okay, what if I give you plug bayonets and square formation for a grand? I guess they don't have much money. Well, it is moderate. What if I gave you canister shot? Well, no, there must be some easier pickings than this. Louisiana. No, they're a protector of France. Don't do that. Mm. 
I mean the Marathas. Tech, canvas shop, payments. Maybe two grand. No, one grand because they're... No, they've not gone for it. Still, we managed to suck out a grand which would be able to repair, exactly repair this craft workshop in Brussels to get us a bit more extra cash. 1897 the next turn. Actually, that's not good at all. We could, well, potentially good. Because, but one thing I have realised is that you could attack us through Antwerp. But I could also build it into a trade port to try and squeeze out a bit of income. Let's hit enter and I'm hoping the Ottomans will decide... Yeah, see, what the British are doing right there, that's what I don't like. Are going to go pick up those troops? Mm, they can't quite get there. May I have to dispatch a cavalry rider to garrison Antwerp. To prevent the enemy from being able to quite so easily uh, invade my territory. Come on, Ottomans. I mean, are we gonna, is this what we're going to do? We're just going to go backwards and forwards? I mean, I'm okay with that. Because it's buying time. Your Venice is raiding Ottoman territory, which is fine. Hmm. What I want to see... Didn't get as much income as we'd like. It's funny, really. It shows me that trade routes are being raided. It's like, oh no, not, not my precious trade. I'm getting so much money. Okay, the cavalry can't get there in time, so I might have to pull Prushenk horse back to Antwerp just to prevent the British from easily landing troops. Can't build a trade port there. Oh, we can, actually. Well, let's do it. Because the possibilities are quite significant. The Ottomans are now back up are up to strength. We'll just go back up to here. Blockade them. They can't advance any further west unless they want to attack us. Which they can. I'm not interested in attacking them. I want you guys. Here. So you can attack the garrison at Stuttgart and take it back and destroy the last French army in the field because we brought Württemberg into the fold before we should be able to march west and start sieging Strasbourg immediately to prevent them from recruiting any more troops and by that point we can secure Paris and try and get a temporary peace so Gunners deploy at range. Infantry in the former infantry in the center. Get our blue militia on the left. Other militia on the right. Get a unit of cavalry on each side. Get up here. When I say that, they are advancing their their uh, pikemen at us. So I might actually be fairly open to letting them do that. Get my pushing horse forward to attack those hussars. My gunners are going to be attacking... Well, they are going to attack their mortars. They might not be firing now, but that's where they're going to go. Looks like they've got audio shenanigans at play. Let's push my militia up the right flank. Now, oh, yeah, their cavalry countercharged my cavalry. So let's get my this militia to spread out and begin engaging the enemy get my guns to begin engaging the enemy Swiss pikes although they are already being hit by rapid musket fire but yeah my pushing horse will beat the hussars 
when the militiamen are engaging the 47th, I'm so thankful their Swiss pikes are getting shot down in the flank like that, because they will go down really quick. Let's begin to form some firing points. Get our, make our way up into the town on the flank. Our general has died from fighting the Hussars. Oh, get my cavalry back, because they're being shot. <laughs> they're unhappy they're being shot. We're getting Darth Mod basic sounds, because the sound is bugged out. Push my Prushenk horse up the flank. There we go. Swiss pikes are getting ready to engage, however they are. They're in the dead ground. Push my militia. Not quite sure why you've deployed backwards. The militia on the flank have been beaten. So my cavalry were just pretty much sat here waiting on the right flank for it to respond to a counter charge you've made it so close actually and they're already wavering try charge you might make them happy because they're grenadiers and they do like melee now my Prussian horse have been hit by the 15th they may well rout. But if they do, I think we're generally in the more advantageous position. So, pushing forces holding on. The grenadiers are sturdy. Okay, there go the Grenadiers. Push my infantry on to attack the Mortars. Run my cavalry straight through the line. Yeah, the enemy have routed my cavalry on the flank, so let's pivot. Switch my guns to engage the Royal Bavier. Again, because it's raining, we get weird sound effects, but you can definitely see that the enemy right flank has crumbled. So we want to get our good infantry over there to fight as quickly as possible. Everyone else, except my cavalry, just hunker down. Well, two of you may form up ready to, with to respond to this Swiss pike unit. They've only lost 60-ish men, so they could come back. 13th Regiment have managed to be to have been routed. Let's get ready to slam my Dragoons. Oh, there we go. Those men have come back so they can return to the battle. Slam my Dragoons into the 15th Light Horse. There we go, you scum. You charged my cavalry and thought you could get away with it. See, the pikemen did come back. You may inform to form up to skirmish with whoever's left, but there we go, the French have been broken. Huzzah! Although, except for those pikes, because now those pikes are still here. That might let some that might give enough time for something else to come back, which normally wouldn't have come back. So you managed to mass charge the Swiss pikemen probably lose a lot of men, but in the counter charge we're going to get a good amount of kills. To be honest, there's not a lot really though that you can do when the when you've got militia versus pikes. You don't have the firepower to do what you want to do. Keep attacking, 
So you can shatter them. There, you're down to 20 odd men. Pikes are good, but they aren't uh, infallible. But there we go. The French have extended their head from their tortoise shell, and their head has been decapitated. And because now Stuttgart is actually quite happy with us, we can leave. Minus two. So maybe not entirely happy with us. Let's take. Put the guns in there. Well, that didn't help. Still, we can take you and a unit of militia back to Stuttgart. Demand the surrender of Strasbourg because they have no garrison and we have a good army there. Good. We're still on 1600. But if I tax Württemberg, I can shift my forces between the cities to maintain public order. And squeeze out a little bit more tax. 2300 this time. All the while, the garrison at Paris gets weaker and weaker. And the army that's sieging it actually gets stronger and stronger. Well, let's hit end turn. Yeah, this this yeah, this isn't a victory lap. This could be short-lived. The British could land another army off the coast and cause us a huge amount of issues. Ah, oh, the French garrison is sallying once more. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to win the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for probably one of the last rolls that the French government throw in our direction. Cheers, everyone.